The two children that we have here today doing the intensive therapy program are Seth and Carson. They are both five years old and they are doing their second session of a two-week intensive program this summer. Uh, they both have cerebral palsy, uh, which would be clarified as spastic diplegia. They both are also a one to one and a half years pe uh, status post a selective dorsal rhizotomy. And they are both working on balance, standing, walking skills. How long are you going to hold this for? You can throw hmm? red coat? During the intensive therapy program, the children are here for three hours. So it really gives us an opportunity to focus on all of their deficits from providing hot packs to warm up their muscles prior to doing, doing strengthening and stretching. We put them through some stretching activities and then also strengthening to, to really focus on all of where their weaknesses are. Uh, we then progress to doing uh, using the TheraSuit during the intensive therapy program and we're able to use the thera TheraSuit while they're walking on the treadmill or doing balance activities or standing. Then the children are progressed to doing activities in the cage using the resistance of the bungees and the assistance of the bungees to do jumping, balance activities, inversion ac exercises. Uh, we also use various other activities during the, this program just to gain the, the next skills that these children are working on. All right, lay down, lay seven. The TheraSuit is very specialized and it's used for approximately one to one and a half hours during the three hour program. And by applying the TheraSuit and the bungees on the TheraSuit, you create a compression force and resistance for the child to move against. So it is a, uh, it is a way to improve their strength, their proprioception, their sensory awareness, their balance. Um, it helps in their gait alignment and their standing alignment and um, really it, it helps to improve their overall endurance also. The suit is composed of a vest, shorts, knee pads and then we have sneakers that we have purchased and then we have uh, sewn on tape to connect the bungees to the shoes. So. Each suit, there's various sizes. The, the yellow suit is the smallest, and then the red is the next size up from the smallest. And the, as you see that the yellow suit has yellow bungees, and the red is the red. And as you go up in size, the, the, the bungees are more resistant. To, um, so the red has greater resistance compared to the yellow. So when we apply the suit, there is a standard uh, way to put the bungees on and alignment for them, but then what we do is we individualize it to the child and to their needs. So Carson has a little bit uh, different alignment of her bungees on her legs to control some of the rotation while she's walking. And Seth, I put on his bungees a little bit different on the back of his knee because he tends to hyperextend his knee. So we try to get him into more of a flex position while he's walking. So there is a standard protocol on how to put the suit and the bungees on and then you customize it to the individual needs of the child. Carson's going to beat us over to that treadmill. Once you have all the bungees applied, it creates a resistance around the entire body. It's not just on the front like or on one leg when you put a weight on a leg, on an ankle, but yet you have total compression and resistance throughout uh, 360 degrees around the body. And you're able to get the child into the best alignment using the bungees so that, like with Seth, trying to get him into more of a flex position so he's not extend, hyperextending his knee. And then he has to then work against these bungees and so they, they also promote greater alignment and facilitation of the correct movements that you want him to use and at the same time also providing some resistance so he has to strengthen his muscles as he's moving. And, and this compression force is a lot of deep compression, which these children with cerebral palsy tend to have uh, impairments in their sensory system, their proprioception, their body awareness. So the other benefit is that they really get a lot of deep pressure in through their skeletal system, and it creates a better awareness for them of where their body is in space.
Federica. Oh, nice stepping up. Set. The, the TheraSuit, uh, we leave on for an hour to maybe an hour and a half. They tended to wear it a little bit longer today, but as you see, I removed the lower portion of Seth's TheraSuit so that he could do some activities a little bit more easily and, and that yet we can still get the benefit of having the vest and the, and the uh, shorts on Seth because his primary area of weakness is also his trunk. So by you just keeping on the vest and the shorts, he's able to tolerate wearing the TheraSuit a little bit longer for me. Uh, and then we can get that benefit of, of continued compression and resistance through his trunk. Be wearing the suit itself is, is fatiguing. So then having the child actually do activities in it becomes even more fatiguing. In order to use the TheraSuit, the therapist must be trained by um, the Pediatric Fitness Center, which is the originator of the TheraSuit, and the therapist goes and is trained for a week in how to use the TheraSuit. Then uh, certain clinics, and there are approximately 90 in the United States that have the TheraSuit and do these programs, the intensive therapy programs, and also have the cages. And during the training, you learn how to use the cages along with the TheraSuit. All right, ready, go. Push. All right, Missy. Push. Good girl. Well, using the cage uh, as a universal exercise unit to do strengthening, it's a basic pulley system with uh, weights for resistance. And which we use sandbags and splints to isolate out the joints and the extremities that we were focusing on. So by doing sandbagging one leg, putting a splint on the other, and then working on abduction, adduction, we can strengthen that one leg and teach that child how to use and move that one leg independent of everything else of their body. Because in CP, that's extremely hard for a child to do. Everything wants to move all at the same time or not at all. So trying to isolate out one extremity from everything else is really important skill for them to learn. Prior to using the suit, we, we require that every child have a recent hip x-ray within the last six months. And they have to be cleared to use the suit and that the, from the orthopedist who states that the hips are not subluxed and there's no danger in subluxation by wearing the suit. Also, if a child had severe scoliosis, they wouldn't be a candidate for the suit. Um, there are other precautions such as high blood pressure or cardiac impairment that we would have to use judgment in, in using the suit. Uh, but most children are able to use it. It really comes down to if they do have any bony deformities or, like I said, a subluxation, we wouldn't want to use it because we could cause more harm to it. We wouldn't want to uh, encourage a bone to go in the, in the wrong alignment.